Coming up next on Channel 8 Eyewitness News Live at 630, a man shoots into a valley neighborhood and a young girl is hit. We'll have the latest in a live report. Having the wrong license plate may soon cost you money. A deadline is just around the corner. And the moment of truth for Saddam Hussein is near as weapons inspectors prepare to go into Iraq. You're watching Channel 8 Eyewitness News, the news leader. A 10-year-old girl is in serious condition tonight after becoming the victim of a shooting. She was actually an innocent victim. That shooting happened a little after 4 o'clock this afternoon in a neighborhood near Bonanza and Lamb. Now, police are looking for several suspects. Channel 8 Eyewitness News is live. Carol Wilkinson joins us from the scene of the shooting. Carol. Well, Colleen, police say they have indications that those who were in the middle of this afternoon's fist fight know who the gunman is. And they say they're relying on that information to help them find him. We started running this way, so she just started running. My sister went to get me, and then um, we're just ducking right there. We just, say, we just heard the shots. When a gunman started shooting into the crowd on the street outside the Trieste Court Apartments, the area was filled with both adults and children. But one bullet missed its intended target, striking an innocent bystander a 10-year-old girl. And we saw her on the ground, and there was like a puddle of blood right there. Police say it all started just after 3.30 p.m., when a fist fight between men on the street escalated. Subject jumped into a four-door blue uh, SUV-type vehicle and pulled out a rifle, and then aimed it down the street and started shooting. We don't know how many rounds were fired at this time. The gunman got away. But the search is on for three black men who eyewitnesses say drove off in a four-door blue SUV. Meanwhile, Metro's gang unit has joined the investigation, although officers say they don't have any indication one way or the other whether or not the shooting was gang-related. And as you may have heard a few minutes ago, that little girl is in serious condition at UMC as we speak. Carol Wilkinson, Channel 8 Eyewitness News Live. Thanks very much, Carol. Tomorrow, a judge will decide whether a woman charged in the death of her 18-month-old daughter should be released on bail. 20-year-old Sophia Mendoza and 21-year-old Damon Tisdale face murder charges and charges of abusing and neglecting their other four children. Bail for Damon Tisdale has already been denied. The couple's trial is scheduled for January. The children are now in the care of their maternal grandmother. A Las Vegas man wanted in an infamous 1989 murder case in Nashville is now back in Tennessee to face charges. Richard D'Antonio is being held without bond. The former Nashville recorder record promoter is charged with first-degree murder in the fatal shooting of Kevin Hughes, a record chart researcher for a music magazine, and the attempted murder of country singer Sammy Sadler. D'Antonio had been working as a supervisor at the downtown Las Vegas Fitzgerald's Hotel Casino. Police say new information in the 13-year-old case led them to Las Vegas. D'Antonio was arrested in July as he arrived home from work. This week, United Nations weapons inspections will resume in Baghdad for the first time since 1998. The team of 18 investigators will start inspecting sites first looked at in the 1990s while they search for any signs of weapons of mass destruction. The searches will give Iraq one last chance to avoid a conflict, and officials hope this time it will be different. I can only base my predictions on their past behavior, and their past behavior has been of obfuscation, delay, and outright lying. Iraq must report all its weapons programs by December 8th. Today, Iraqi officials sent a letter to the U.N. protesting the inspections. They argue the conditions they have to meet for inspections would eventually give the United States an excuse to attack Iraq. Well, your license plate may be something that you don't think about, but beginning January 1st, if you have the wrong one, it may cost you. Channel 8 Eyewitness News is live. Renata Troiani joins us with more on this story. Renata? Colleen, Nevada has one of the largest selections of license plates, but coming up in January, there is one specific plate that police will be targeting. It may not be the first thing you look at as cars drive by you at 65 miles per hour. But in the new year, police in Nevada keeping their eyes peeled for this, the Bighorn Sheep license plate. Beginning January 1st, the plates will be illegal. The reason? 
They're too hard for police to see. Because the bighorn sheep plates are getting faded and worn out. The Nevada Department of Transportation has spent over a year collecting those plates and issuing the new sunset plate. They've handed out more than 600,000, but there are still old plates out there. Some folks haven't gotten the word or didn't get their license plates in the mail, so they went ahead and renewed their registration for 2003 and then put the yellow decal on the bighorn sheep license plate. And that's the tip off. And the DMV can't really track who has done that and who has not. There is a three month grace period until March. But several police agencies say if motorists are stopped twice in that grace period, it could result in a $95 fine. The DMV has been selling these renewal permits to people with old plates. State Senator Bob Coffin agrees the licenses should be changed, but says no one should have to pay a fine. Not yet. Now it's a question of time, and they've got grace period, and maybe we'll reduce the fine. In any event, we might even increase the grace period, but we'll get them changed. The state will also be kicking off a series of public service announcements. They'd like to keep the inconvenience to drivers to a minimum. Now, you will have to physically go to a DMV office in order to exchange your plates, but we are told the best time to go Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday of this week. We're told that those offices aren't quite as busy right before Thanksgiving. Renata Troiani, Channel 8 Eyewitness News Live. Thanks very much, Renata. Now, if you have one of the old plain blue Nevada plates with white lettering like the one you see here, you do not have to replace it. The only plates that must be turned in are the big horned sheep plates. We can expect a busy holiday travel week. Millions of Americans will take to the roads and the skies for the Thanksgiving holiday weekend. On the roadways, police will be out in full force enforcing traffic laws and looking for drunk drivers. Now, if you fly, a couple of things we want to remind you. Do not pack wrapped gifts because all bags are subject to search. Make sure that you pack your film in your carry-on. New screening equipment for checked luggage will damage film. As you know, only one carry-on plus one personal item is allowed. There are several items that you cannot carry on. Check with the airport for a specific list. And remember to arrive early, at least two hours before your flight. Bring your ticket or printed e-ticket confirmation and photo ID. And as always, just to be safe, make sure you call ahead to make sure that your flight information is correct. And hopefully, actually it looks like it might be a good week for visitors. Let's head over to the Weather Center, check in with Mark Fister. And you were mentioning, Mark, more changes. Yeah, more changes. Tomorrow is not going to be the greatest day we've ever seen here in the valley with some windy conditions, cooler temperatures, and possibly a chance of some uh, rainfall here in town. But after that, we'll still see it breezy and cool, but it looks like the rain goes away. At least that's what it's looking like now on the model runs. 57 at Cheyenne, 60 at MOK, 57 out at West DI, 59 at Boulder City, 55 at Searchlight, uh, 59, uh, 61 out at the lake, and 49 at Pahrump. A little bit of change in the forecast since uh, this time last night. We'll show it to you coming up in just a couple minutes, Colleen. We'll see you then. Thanks, Mark. This is the time of year where kids are the experts. Find out the verdict on this year's toy test. We'll have a preview coming up. Plus, George Knapp looks at why some people are opposed to bringing those cute, cuddly pandas for the Las Vegas Strip. And we do know some bears who are feeling cuddly tonight. Chris Matthews rolls through the NFL and lots more coming up in sports. You're watching Channel 8 Eyewitness News with Colleen May, Neighborhood Weather with Mark Fister, and Sports with Chris Matthews. Channel 8 Eyewitness News, the news leader. Shopping for toys this holiday season is about to get a little easier. Beginning tomorrow, 8 on your side, consumer editor Michael Geezer will bring us results from the 23rd annual toy test. Here's a preview. This year, 96 major toy makers supplied 20 copies of each toy to 20 cities, including Las Vegas. This year, some of the little testers come from the Variety Day School and from the Matt Kelly Elementary School Latchkey Program. The kids ranged in age from 2 to 12. After one week, they submitted the grades, which were sent on to be compiled nationally. In the end, there were some winners and losers. What's the worst possible thing for a toy? to be standing here on the table away from all of them. But that's what we found with this girlsy interactive talking doll. She's not talking to anyone right now. But the Crayola Baker seemed to be a hit. It melts stuff really quick. They learned something um, from solids to liquids back to solids because they may not have touched on that in science yet. That's why the toys were graded by adults and kids. 
to give parents the best knowledge possible before they head to the stores. We'll show you which toys are recommended and which ones didn't live up to the hype. So get ready for the annual toy test. Michael Geeser, Channel 8 Eyewitness News. And you can see our toy test beginning tomorrow at 5 p.m. The toy test will run Monday through Wednesday at 5 p.m. and 6 p.m. here on Channel 8 Eyewitness News. Well, a nice ending to the weekend. Will the nice weather last through the work week? We were expecting rain, but now new changes in your weather forecast. Mark Pister has the details coming up. And George Knapp tells us about a plan to bring a pair of pandas to the Las Vegas Strip and how it's winning over its critics. Salmon tartare on a vanilla oil topped with papaya sesame seaweeds. What? That's it? The bean don't eat no snooty food. I'm going to the surf buffet for some real food. Oh, it's a surf buffet. Now that's more like it. Can't get enough, not at the surf buffet, where it's 24 hours of incredible food. Hey, you'll never go hungry at the surf buffet. You might think that Las Vegas would be the worst place for a pair of endangered pandas, but that's not what some people think. A long-range plan is in the works to bring a pair of pandas to a Las Vegas gaming property. George Knapp of the Channel 8 Eye team tells us about the proposal already generating pandemonium. All fine. It's a long way, literally and figuratively, from the quiet bamboo forests of central China and the few remaining enclaves of the wild panda to the noise and spectacle of Las Vegas. On the surface, you might even say Las Vegas would seem the worst place to bring pandas. I can't think of a better place, actually. High-powered political consultant Sig Rogic is the point man in a plan by Mandalay Resorts to bring a pair of pandas to the Las Vegas Strip. He's already used his contacts in the Chinese government to secure a signed memo of understanding to lease a pair of pandas for a 10-year period. It's a complicated process made easier by the sheer number of people who visit Las Vegas each year. Rogish points to the success of Mandalay's Shark Reef Aquarium. Approaching a couple million people see it a year. Imagine doing the same thing for a panda pavilion, a not-for-profit, mind you where you might have anywhere from four to five to six, seven million people a year coming to see it. All the resources that are gained from that, all the monies that are gained go back to preserving the panda. No solid numbers are on the table, but Mandalay has talked of giving $10 million a year to China, money that would be strictly earmarked for the preservation of pandas and their habitat. Las Vegas could end up doing more for panda preservation than anyone else in history. We know there's going to be some opposition. You know, there are some purists in the world that think that, well, my gosh, because it's Las Vegas, uh, you know, uh, why should it be here? But people just need to be educated that we're going to do the right thing. And what is the right thing? Even great zoos like the San Diego Zoo provide their pandas with 40,000 square feet of living space. Mandalay Bay has set aside at least two acres at this site adjacent to Shark Reef for its panda pavilion. Visitors would enter without going through the casino, and the company agreed the pandas would not be used in marketing gambling, not even on t-shirts. Finally, there must be scientific benefits as part of the deal. That is, Mandalay Bay's team of experts must have a scientific aim, something like studying the eating habits or mating habits. Everything would be monitored by the Chinese and U.S. government with the ultimate aim of helping pandas to survive and flourish. The plan still has a long way to go before it's a lock, but Rogish, as usual, is optimistic. It's going to happen, in my opinion. George Knapp, Eyewitness News. Sig Rogic says it might take two years to finalize the deal. Other cities are also looking for pandas, such as L.A. and Memphis, but Rogic says Las Vegas has better resources to compete. And you got to admit, they are cute. They are adorable. They are adorable little animals. Uh, let's talk about the weather. It's going to be let's a change. Talk about the let's, well, that's, that's what we do in this segment. You notice how it says right there in the script? Mark, talk about weather. Mark, talk about weather, and that's what we're going to do right now. Uh, can you imagine, like, panda slot machines? You know, they'll probably get those in place before the pandas come. That way they can say, hey, 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 hey. They were here before the pandas got here. 75 was the high today at Cheyenne, 75 at East Cary, 72 at North Rancho, 77 at Windmill, 72 at Southeast and 71 Southwest Town at South Durango, 74 for high today at Prim, 77 at Boulder City, 69 at Mesquite, 50 up at Tonopah.
Out at Lincoln Elementary School at Cheyenne, sitting at 57 now. Winds out of the north, northeast at uh, nothing, really, just real light. Out of the south, southwest at four with 57 degrees and 44% humidity at North Buffalo. At Eisenberg Elementary School, I'm at Hillboint in Summerlin. Becker Middle School sits at 58 degrees. Winds out of the west at two. 44% humidity at Jones and Smoke Ranch at Doris Reed Elementary. Temperature is 56 and the winds out of the west at two miles an hour there. Officially today, a little bit cooler than what it was yesterday. We only got up to 70. Eight above the normal of 62. 81 was the record back in 1949. 46 the low this morning. We'll see some cloud cover move in overnight tonight, so we're looking at a partly cloudy night. Next big system is out here in the Pacific. This is where we expect a whole bunch of mess over the next couple of days. And because of where it sits and the different models, computer models that we use, it's hard to get really a handle on this. What we can tell you is by tomorrow, we're looking at some strong winds developing with gusts around 40 miles an hour here in the valley. Temperature will be dropping over the next few days. And we're also planning on possibly a chance of some showers tomorrow. We've taken it out of forecast for the week ahead, but still kind of iffy right now. Uh, looking at some mixed precip just outside of Salt Lake now, turning over to an icy sleety mixture. Most of that was snow earlier today. Great for the mountains around the Salt Lake if you're doing a little skiing and clear right now throughout most of Nevada. A little mixed precip up around the Elko area. 40 uh, actually, 41 the current temperature in Cedar City, 67 in Phoenix. Phoenix will top out at 73 tomorrow, 34 for a high at Denver, 40 up in Boise. Our forecast for tonight, 47 degrees is an overnight low, partly cloudy skies. Winds will be out of the north, 10 to 20, picking up tonight. By tomorrow, they'll be downright gusty at times. We're looking at gusts up to about 40 miles an hour. Scattered showers of possibility. It will be windy, much cooler, 60 for a high. Lake Mead, windy and cooler, 67 with some scattered showers. Gusts to around 45. And look at that, a little snow up in Mount Charleston. Sleigh bells ring, are you listening? Uh, windy and cooler. What's the next line? In the lane, snow is oh, glistening. Okay. All right, 58 degrees by Tuesday, 55 on Wednesday. Look at the overnight low. When you're going to wake up Wednesday morning to around 30, 35 degrees. And then we're back into the low 40s Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday for overnight lows. High temperatures in the low 60s. So it's getting cool. It's and cool to... weather kind of goes with the holidays for some reason. Yeah, you, you know, and what you can do here in Las Vegas is kind of keep your hands warm while you fry that turkey over the <laughs> boiling fat. That helps out a lot, too. I think. Thank yeah. you. Okay. okay. Chris is here with sports. All right, football. It's getting down to the nitty gritty in the NFL. No room for error. Not even in Washington where the Skins and Rams went to battle. Check out the National Football League. And the Rebels are ready to roll. They tip off tonight. Hear what others are saying. Sports is next. Well, the Rams and Redskins in a nail biter. Now, after sitting out five games, Kurt Warner back in for St. Louis. Take you right to the fourth quarter with the Rams trailing by 10. But Warner, who passed for over 302 touchdowns, gets his biggie right here. Warner, the touchdown pass. He also drove his team down to the five yard line with seconds to play. Just when Rams fans were ready to celebrate, LeVar Arrington strips the ball. And the Skins beat St. Louis 2017 both. They're five and six on the season. It was freezing cold outside Chicago. Bears and Lions from Champaign. Chicago looking to snap an eight game losing streak. Trailing on the move, Des White, great catch. Bears needing a field goal with six seconds to go for the tie. They get it. Takes this thing into overtime, but in the extra frame. Oh, they kick it right through a 40 yarder. It is good. And the Bears win it. 2017 in overtime. Across. Browns and Saints, Boyer's they came to play. Across. Boy, big hit right there. Second half, Saints trading 14-6. Here they come. Deuce McAllister missed the game. James Federson did not. Goes in from 17 out. But the Browns are hot. They win for the fourth time in their last five games. Not a good day for the home fans in New Orleans. Saints have lost three of four with Cleveland's 24-15 win. Minnesota on the road in Boston to play the Patriots. That's Tom Brady, frozen rope. He threw for three touchdowns in the first half alone. Minnesota's Dante Culpepper also had a pretty good game. Two touchdown passes. His second was a biggie. Back of the end zone. Check it out. Somehow Kelly Campbell is wide open, closing the gap on New England's lead. But when it counted most and trailing by seven, Dante Culpepper, his last hope, right here. With 17 seconds to play, the pass falls incomplete. Vikings lose their 16th straight road game as they fall to New England 24-17. Well, the mighty Raider Nation following fans of the Valley of the Sun. First half, Jerry Porter, who caught two first half touchdowns, helps Oakland take a 21-14 halftime lead. Second half, outcome still up for grabs. It's Gannon going up top, finding Jerry Rice. 
Gannon threw for three touchdowns. Rice and his 37-yard grab blew it as the Raiders going to beat the Cardinals 41 to 20 on the board. Jets were winners, as was Miami. Atlanta just creams Carolina 41 to nothing. Pittsburgh on top of Cincinnati 29-21. It was Tampa Bay beating Green Bay. Houston by two. It was Seattle beating Kansas City 39-32. Jacksonville falls to Dallas 21-19. And it's 6-3 first half. Denver with the lead. UNLV's football team spent the weekend watching football. They didn't play. They don't play until next weekend. They play the conference champs, Colorado State. UNLV doesn't get a play in a postseason, but hey, they can finish on a positive by beating the champions. Uh, we didn't have a great year, and we made a lot of mistakes this year and all that, but I think we'll go over to this game as a family, and I think that kind of a, of a belief that is strong within us uh, will really sustain us. Rams were invited, accepted to play in the Liberty Bowl. They are the champs. They are a 17 and a half point favorite. It is time for basketball fans to look forward to the running Rebels. They open tonight against Portland State. Dalron Johnson is back for his senior year. That's going to drive opponents nuts. Uh, he's just a great athlete, and he's tall and lanky, too, so he's really hard to guard. Um, obviously, I, I think he's probably the best player in our conference. So he's, I would say him and Marcus Banks as well. I mean, just a great athlete and future NBA player probably. All right, Lem Banker tells us that the uh, UNLV is favored by 19 and a half points. Also, two uh, players that played for Jerry Tarkanian being investigated by the NCAA, accepting cash and other benefits. More on that later. Okay, we'll see you back you here tonight at 11. Okay. Thanks, Chris. Also coming up tonight on Eyewitness News Live at 11, we'll have the very latest on that shooting of a 10-year-old Las Vegas girl, how she's doing and the search for the suspects who shot her. And tonight's CBS Evening Movie tells a story of the relationship of two celebrities who made their marks on Las Vegas entertainment. Tonight at 11, comedian Jerry Lewis talks about his former partner, the late Dean Martin. We both needed a brother. We both needed to connect with someone else. We'll have the real story of Martin and Dean in tonight's Channel 8 Eyewitness News special assignment. That's going to be a good movie uh, tonight on Channel 8. <laughs> looking forward to it. Hey, tomorrow going to be a rocky day. We're looking at a chance of showers in the forecast tomorrow. And uh, windy conditions with gusts to around 35, 40 miles an hour. High temperature of about 60 degrees. Look at the low on Wednesday. Look at it, Chris. It's amazing. Well, how low is it? Is, it that, is that right? Is it going to be 35? It's going to be 35 Wednesday morning when you wake up. We're, and playing, then, we're playing football on Thursday. It's our annual Turkey Day game. A bunch of guys from the station so forth. 60 degrees. 60 degrees. It's going to be good football weather. Let's wrap this up. <laughs> you, you guys are going to need, like, you know, all the Bengay and stuff yeah, come yeah. Friday, aren't you? Yeah. Enjoy your evening. We'll see you back here tonight. You scratched your Bye -bye. finger, though.